Hello and welcome to my kitchen. So as you could see there is a lot of mosaic tiling. I've been doing this kind of technique with tiles and plates for the last seven years. I did it for maybe a couple months and then I stopped and took a break for like six years <laughs> and then I did it again and I just finally finished my kitchen. I live near a place where we get a lot of um, all different kinds of antiques. It's a big flea market and I go around the flea market for, for years I've been doing this and just ask for, for plates. We use the plates, we break the plates accidentally, we buy some with cracks, we get them very, very cheap, a dollar, two dollars, and with all the broken plates and the cracked plates, I, I do this plate wall. I recycle or upcycle it to, to do this. So I hope you enjoy this video and pr please subscribe to the channel. There's, I do a lot of do-it-yourselves that are very um, unusual. <laughs> But I, I'm enjoying it and I hope you enjoy watching along. So as you can see, I have a lot of plates here and I'm probably going to be using all of it. I also have some knick-knacky stuff like this windmill and this little Dutch painting girl. Uh, I don't know where they came from. Actually, a lot of stuff was found in the dumpster, funny enough. But there are some stuff I'm definitely not breaking, like this dog. And I really have an attachment to these balls. I think they look cool in front of the plates. So here we go. So most of the pieces are broken, something like this. They have a crack on the side or down the middle, but they have to be further broken. So I use a this tile um, cutter. It's you can get them at like Home Depot. They're basically like clippers. You just kind of clip that the tile. If you want it to be more precise, you could use an actual tile cutter um, saw. It's like a saw that you put water, it has water um, on the bottom and it rotates with water and it cuts through porcelain and stone pretty nicely. But this does the trick. Um, so I basically go around the edge of the plate to give a flat image and I like to take the center of the plate where they have the, the main image and have it like very separate from the outside uh, decorations and I, I like to mismatch them so I take the, the actual image plate and I put it in a pile and then I further break the, um, the edges because I don't like them sticking up too much because then it's hard to clean and it just like becomes a dagger when you put it in so I tend to further break them to make sure they're not sticking up too much and that's how I do a plate. For uh, cups, it's a little bit more breaking because um, it, it, it's to get the image flat, it takes a lot more work. And bowls are <laughs> more breaking too. Um, this is like one of those plate bowls. I don't know what they're called. I'm not an expert. Anyways, the more they curve, the harder they're, they're, they are to break and you have to just keep on snipping them and until you get like a flat somewhat flat piece that works for you and it's much harder to get the image um the center image because you're you're just breaking so much more and the angles are a little more difficult to get the uh, to compromise the intact center image it's more difficult with bowls or cups than it is for the really flat plates
for the um, the mortar, I use like a very basic mortar. I found, actually, I think I had this left over. It's for tile. You could use it for floor, but make sure that, that this one you use for vertical, so it can also do vertical. And don't do what I did in this project. Do not get um, the unbleached uh, mortar. Get the ones that, that's white, so then it doesn't <laughs> compromise your grout lines. Um, in general, you don't want the mortar to stick up too much. You kind of want it like a bed of mortar underneath, just enough for it to really stick. So it, it's a little bit of a learning curve. So you want the tile to stick. You want to see a little bit of the, um, the mortar coming through, but you don't want it to go above where your grout is going to be. So if you have some um, issues with that, it going too far up and even onto the tile you could take like a you know any kind of object and kind of scrape it down or your, your fingers can sometimes do the trick but if you have a mortar that is not gray and is the same as the um the grout you're going to use like a white it, it definitely helps with hiding <laughs> the gray detailing so it, it does help with um it does give you some room for error and as you can see, I first start with putting, placing the, the circular image of the plate or the bowl. And then I um, alternate the sides. So if I have like a very Chinese image um, for some of the plates are Chinese or Japanese, I kind of tend to like to put the, um, the, the border of a different plate that was very like English. And I think it, it just kind of... Um, blends it all together I think more nicely and as you can see there's just so many shades of blue so it kind of helps with that it kind of just gives a more cohesive um, wall image and I don't know it just, I just I like to do that um, sometimes with the flow plates I kind of keep them intact with the borders and the plate just because they're kind of um, a pricey kind of plate uh, there's one right here on the left hand side you could see it's kind of like blurry looking those are the ones that if you find the plate intact you might not want to break it they, they're the ones that tend to be a little bit on the pricier side
so it might be a good time to go into the pr plate pricing and everything um, and what to look out for uh, if you find some things that you want to if you really want this plate wall but you, you're a little bit hesitant about breaking something because it might be worth something uh, in general the older plates are worth more um, as you can see that flow blue one the blurry looking plates they are older and when you break plates you know sometimes the older ones have a, cr a crack or a chip and so i have broken them to get the image flat the more ex pricier ones in general and um this, this is just a generalization they tend to be they break like clay they have this like clay feeling to them and the newer ones when you break them they are um they break like really hard porcelain plastic it's hard to really describe and the older ones tend to be thicker so if it's an unbroken plate the really really old ones tend to be thicker and i have some persian porcelain that are you know super thick very ancient um persian porcelain um tiles uh that i would never break and they're super duper thick and there was one uh, plate it's going to come up soon it's a japanese one i probably shouldn't shouldn't have broke it further i took the trim off of it and put it on the wall it had a little chip in it but i think even with that chip i probably shouldn't have done that so in general you can kind of tell by the the heaviness of the plate if it's uh new versus old and old tends to be more valuable also if there's like if you're going through a flea market and you find like the same image like i find like the care the, the carriage english carriage image over and over again and there's a few japanese ones that are like the same picture over and over again and you find that like you know 20 vendors are selling are selling the same plate it's probably not worth that much and you could always you know buy it go look it up see what you want to do and then if it's worth something it's kind of cool to put it on your wall so i for me it's like a whatever type thing um and i understand a lot of people have really or would be upset with, with even hearing that but um yeah so the, there's so many different options and I'm just throwing that out there about price and what to look for
So here's a very old plate. It's probably worth something. But is it really worth something? I mean, look at that. That's like a chip and a half. <laughs> I probably got it for a dollar. Anyways, you can kind of see how old it is. And you can see that the it, that it almost looks like clay, the porcelain quality. And this is a much newer one. Um, it's also broken. I bought it broken. It's a cool image. Uh, it looks very floral. It looks like a um, some sort of floral Chinese design. Anyways, it breaks. Even the way they break is much different. This one breaks like in big, like jagged pieces. Um, just just has a different feel to it and they tend to be a lot lighter so you can kind of tell the difference between ones that are worth something and ones that probably aren't in general as far as how old they are is a flow a flow plate um i think i'm putting on one that looks like a flow plate too but i don't think it is it's just kind of the same color um as you can see the the pigments tend to be like bleeding uh i don't know a lot about these plates but they are the ones that people are you know seem to ha hold in the highest regard uh that i've known from the whole plate scene anyways they're really cool they have this kind of um, fluid look to them and they look very ancient and even the um the print it like looks like a defect with how it's like almost like watercolor and it just kind of bled over time and but that look is kind of seems to be sought after and those ones you might want to check the price and the date and all that jazz I didn't. <laughs> I was like, this thing is cracked. I'm putting it on my wall. And to tell you the truth, I appreciate it on my wall. I love the flow blues. I like looking at them in contrast with everything else. They just make me happy. Um, if they were sticking on my wall in other forms, they wouldn't make make me as much as happy as they are the way they are in tile. And the fact that I've worked with them and I feel that pride. So a lot of people would be angry again, but whatever.
Now, this next plate, I really shouldn't have broken it further. I think it was a little chip, and I was like, oh, it's beautiful, I'll put my wall. And it's so thick, um, which is a good indication that it's not cheap. <laughs> and it looks handmade, like Japanese, and I'm sorry if a collector's seeing this and is like, ah, oh, damn, that's like worth some money. But again, I love it on my wall, and I'm putting teacups around it. Now this is super duper experimental. I put some teacups um, in my wall, and they're really cool, and they've been up there for five years, no problem, no movement. So I have this way of doing them. I'm just kind of shoving in a lot of the, the mortar and hoping for the, for the best. And I had this whole, uh, you know, artistic kind of way of looking at this, I guess, where I, I feel like it's a Japanese, or Chinese, <laughs> but to me it looks Japanese, um, kind of painting so I'm putting a little Japanese tea ceremony around it in fact most of the all of the um, teacups that are broken around this thing are all British but you know it's the thought that matters and so I'm giving it a little tea ceremony that's what I'm telling inside my head so I'm basically shoving it full of this mortar mix which you probably I'm using the material maybe a little bit wrong, but it, it does do the trick. It's pretty solid. I'm just going to go around the whole thing with the teacups because this tile, like I said, it's super thick. It's raised maybe an inch above all the other tiles. It's very, very thick. So this is just a good way of kind of bringing it up with the tea, um, the teacups to that height.
Now the grout. I don't know what grout I'm using. <laughs> I went to Home Depot one day and Home Depot was like getting rid of grout for free. And I took like a million boxes and then it kind of, they were in these plastic bag inside the boxes and they got it kind of taken out of the box and it became like a hot mess. Anyways, grout is grout in this case. Um, I do use special grout for stairs and tile inlays in shelves and cabinetry, but this grout is grout for, for this kind of situation, I think. This grout works perfectly fine. It's a whitish color. <laughs> and thank god it's kind of all matching <laughs> my, so um, people probably think i'm insane but yeah it works fine and there are like you can you know um add things to the grout to make it so it's more resistant to stain which i'm probably gonna have to do because right here the, the grout job i'm doing is right over the um the stove I was also thinking of maybe getting some sort of copper because I like the way copper looks stainless steel would probably be more practical but I'm, I'm more of a brass copper girl like some sort of brass or copper decorative plate to go over this when I'm doing some sort of really kind of messy meal in the kitchen I could just kind of put, put lean it against the tile so it just adds some protection so I have some plans uh, we'll see but in general, as far as cleaning, I know a lot of people have asked that on my TikTok and yada yada. It cleans remarkably well. I mean, this is porcelain. They're dishes. They're designed to, like, you know, wash. <laughs> that said, the grout is an issue and the grout lines are super thick. So I am going to look into putting some sort of treatment on the grout to make it more um, easier to clean in general around the whole kitchen. Around the, the actual teacups, I had to make sure that the um, the, gr uh, the mortar wasn't showing through. It was kind of difficult because it was such a three-dimensional thing, and it was so much harder to get the mortar not to do this, especially since I was relying so much on the mortar for these teacups to stick. So I had to take a, um, a butter knife and just kind of scrape it around. It was not the most fun job. For the actual grouting, grouting around the teacups, I had to just really shove it in. <laughs> um, and this grout, see, for me, I've noticed with tiling or this kind of tiling, normal tiling, you don't really notice movement as much as something like this, um, or tiling things like stairs or ceilings. I find that the mortar really secures it a lot, but the grout is like, the nail in the coffin it kind of just really makes sure it's in place 
And when something's grouted, it's very hard to get it off. If something's mortared in, um, it's not the end of the world taking it off. If something grouted in and mortared in, it's really hard to get off your wall. So for this kind of sculptural technique, I'm really relying on shoving the grout in. Also, I did like a TikTok thingy and someone was like, you're not using the proper tools for tile. Yes, I am using a glove. But again, all this is kind of three-dimensional. Even the plates, it's like they do have some edges that kind of stick up. Um, you can kind of make it soften that a little bit. But for me, I take a, like a mason's glove and I just shove that in. And that was a piece that just came out. Um, but I only lost one little piece that was kind of irrelevant was like a piece of a teapot tea um cup I just shoved in as an afterthought and that came out um but the rest of them like the really prized teacups around this Japanese Chinese Asian um beautiful tile they all stayed firmly in place and I'm so happy about that When I, it comes to wiping it off, I'm also not normal. And I use a rag. After this is all done, I just throw it away. I tend to like to recycle rags from, we have an Airbnb, and so we go through a lot of towels and the towels just get destroyed. And I take those towels, I rip them off, and I have, rip them apart rather, and I have a rag. So the first time I go through and I just kind of, move the grout around and shove it in further because sometimes I've noticed that I, I can't really get into like a little nook and I just shove the grout in with the um, washcloth or the, the, t the piece of the towel and the next time I go around and I um, clean it off the wood sections and just clean off the really like atrocious 
grout on the tile and then the next time I go through and I clean off the little grout detailings that are just left in place and then the next time I do that again and next time I do that again so I go through a lot of wiping um, before it's done. my kitchen it's all done I'm so happy I um, put in some LED lighting strips I'm not done with that but the actual tiling is done this has been years years with like a six-year break but it's taking me a while so for I would say if I were to put on like a ballpark estimate of how long this project took I would say about a month of work but it's definitely worth it uh, if you want to take on this project I suggest you thrift the tiles until you have boxes and boxes before starting if you want something similar to the scale if you want something small you know you could do something small too but it was really a fun project I love my kitchen I realize this is not for everyone uh, and I realize a lot of people are gonna hate me, but I love it. I love how this artistic section turned out. I just wish that I did the Japanese tile a little further up so you could just appreciate it more, but there was a hole in the tile, so I had to stick it there. But I'm just in love with it. I'm in love with seeing all the different varieties of tile and all the artwork and all the geniuses that went into like painting them and the history involved in everything and I just I just love it I love the collage look the kind of patchwork look and if you like this video um, please check out the rest of my videos and please support the channel by subscribing sharing liking all of that and <laughs> have a beautiful day